guys. Welcome back to another episode of The Life of a Makeup Artist. I'm your host, Jaleesa Jaikaran. And today we are here with Refer, a Canadian brush company based in Toronto. And we're going to be digging deep into the brand. Um, it's actually a brand that launched in December of 2018. Um, and we are here with Tom, one of the founders. So we're going to be digging deep and let's welcome Tom to the show. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, Tom, mm -hmm. tell me about the brand Refer. Um, I know you launched in December of 2018. Mm -hmm. I was seeing it all over Instagram and in makeup groups. And I was like, what is this brand about? <laughs> so tell me about Refer. So, I mean, Refer is actually, I mean, we have a pretty bizarre story. So okay. so Refer as a brand, we started it as, as three engineers. So we were friends for the past 10 years. We went to school together. We did a lot of work together as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, we started Refer around like last year. And uh, because like all of us, like we don't have any makeup experience. We're not makeup artists. Oh my God, right? that's crazy. I mean, like like we just somehow stumbled upon into like the makeup community. Uh -huh. And of course, like when we first started, like I didn't know how to really create like the perfect makeup brush. Mm -hmm. So all we had to do is literally like we as a team, you know, me, my friend Deanne, my friend um, Kenny, we traveled across the States, Canada. We went to New York and LA. I think I personally met around like 170 different artists. Wow. And asking like like literally like the question of like how to make a perfect makeup brush. Yes. Because like that's the only thing that we knew how to do. Mm -hmm. And and that's how we launched our core set of brush 01 to brush 06 in last December with all of the feedback from the makeup community. Wow. So... I remember our first conversation, mm -hmm. um, we started to talk about Kumano. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so that is a town in Japan, that's and correct. that's where a lot of makeup brushes are made. Mm -hmm. So what was Kumano like? Because I, I did a little bit of research, and I saw that there are over 80 family-run brush companies oh, yeah. <laughs> that generate over $15 million a year. Mm -hmm. um, and... It, and Kumano is responsible for almost 80% uh, total of all Japanese brushes. So what was it like in Kumano and how did you guys get there? Like, tell me about that whole story because that, that's somewhere that I really want to go to now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kumano is like a little town. It's almost like a farmland, but with like a lot of mountains and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a very historical town mm -hmm. that uh, they've been making brushes, especially they started with Kalukivi brushes for the past 300 years so they are known for their brush making skills mm -hmm. and like I believe like a lot of artisans have like generations of skills you know like passed down from like grandfather you know grandfather etc so they're expert and mm -hmm. they're like some of the most devoted and passionate artisans I've ever met yeah so if you look at makeup brushes I would say like probably 99% 99% of all of the most high end most luxurious and expensive brushes are all made in Kumano like yeah. brands like you know Chiku Hodo Haku Hodo um, Tom Ford, etc. They're all made in Japan, and they're all made in Kumano. Yeah, I saw that they have. Um, they it's so intense that they actually have a brush festival. Yeah, they do. I'm just like I got. I went de really deep into Google looking yeah, up, looking crazy. up everything. Um. So okay. So if you if you're interested in in starting a brush company, you just show up in Kumano, and 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 the resources are just there for you. Well, not necessarily. I think uh, Japanese as a tradition that they they only work with people that they trust, and mm -hmm. they only work with people that uh, that there's uh, that's that they have a introduction with because mm -hmm. they don't really work with just random person just show up in show, a town, yeah. and then you have to uh, show dedication and commitment with them. Yeah, and uh, it is a pretty closed, like I want to say, like you can just show up and then start a brush company. You definitely need to develop that relationship with them, and then and then show them your work, and then show you, show them your dedication. And uh, and um, if they, I think if you show that you are a serious person that wants to really start a makeup uh, a brush brand, they are uh, they are likely going to help you. Oh, nice. Mm. So tell me a little bit about um, your background because I know you told me that. You guys just had an idea. You were engineers, but yeah. I know that most engineers are not sitting around thinking about makeup brushes. Oh yeah. So tell me how about like how did that come about? So my background, so I did financial mathematics mm -hmm. in university, and uh, I started working basically as a financial engineer for IBM. Well, we're part of IBM, 
this company called Algorithmics. I know this sounds very, very wow. nerdy. I mean, we just like <laughs> floors out of these PhDs. I'm like confused already. Yeah, in <laughs> mathematician. So, so yeah, so we did that. And uh, my friend Kenny worked at Facebook. Uh-huh. And my friend Deanne was also a developer for a long time. So my friend Deanne actually had a pretty crazy story as well. She, I mean, he started as a civil engineer mm-hmm. and then transferred into programming. So I think like all three of us are very adventurous. Yeah. And uh, and we started doing e-commerce in the past, like a, like a couple years ago. And then we started working together, pushing different products, et cetera. And we came across makeup brushes because, so beauty is always something that's very fascinating to us because it's like it was growing rapidly and and it still is. Yeah. And something that we're really interested in because it's something that's. Like it, like we don't we don't understand it sometimes, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but You're like it, it this is, is the same yeah, three like, like, color, this lipstick is the same. Yeah, I'm like it's, no, it's, this one has like, a different it's, undertone. It's like the communities. There's a lot of opinions, like yeah. the growth, and we're just really interested. So I mean, like we do what we do best, I guess, just asking around and then and then having coffee with with different artists. Yeah. And then so we, we were really interested in the space, and we always ask questions like. Like, what do you think, like, in your space, like, what is the one product that you, you wish that there is disruption? Mm-hmm. And I think, like, answer was prob- probably pretty unanimous that uh, they are, like, they think that brushes are something that is very, very hard to get in terms of high-quality brushes. Yeah. So they think that, obviously, there are around, I don't, I don't even know how many brush brands are there, probably hundreds yeah, and hundreds. thousands. And, and then, like, a lot of brands are coming out with brushes yes. more and more now. And I would say, like, a, li- a lot of artists told me that almost 99% of them are are bad are bad you know brushes like yeah. they're made with cheap quality and then that they that stick top, in your eye you know yeah exactly and then <laughs> your and, client and, is and like they hurt, oh. <laughs> like they don't have enough pigmentation etc yeah so like the top uh, like i would say like one to two percent really good brushes are are very expensive also and then not very accessible so we thought like that is going to be a pretty good place place for us to start mm-hmm. and so when we met our partners in japan like we instantly knew that you know we have to do this because because this is like we think it is a great opportunity for yeah. us to break into the industry, and especially as guys, you know, like brushes is something that we can actually feel and then see like the construction yeah. and then understand the quality. It's a lot more intuitive for us than yeah. than I would say like other products like say like eyeshadow palettes or yeah. like lipsticks. So that's why we started that. I love that. Mm. So what I really admire about you and the brand is that um, most people, when they're getting into a new field or anything Mm. new, it's very scary. But you guys just went full throttle and (laughs) made it work. You were like, I don't know about this this industry, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to make it work and I'm going to give the best that I can. Mm. So I really love that. Um, And as an outsider looking in, before you got fully invested in Mm. the business, um, I know you said that a lot of people said that brands were missing the mark, but mm-hmm. where, in your opinion, where did you see other brands missing the mark, especially when it comes to the pro community? Because I know you said you worked with over 170 pro artists. Mm-hmm. A lot of brands are not doing that now. They're focused on influencers, celebrities, mm-hmm. and like sometimes the pro artist gets pushed to the side. So I really um, appreciate that you guys are focusing, you know, the business on the pro community. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, as an outsider, especially in like, you know, you said you did a lot of Mm e-commerce. So what, uh, like, what do you guys do as a brand to kind of like fill the gap on what other brands weren't doing? I think, I mean, it might be a blessing in disguise. I don't think, well, personally, I don't, I don't think a lot of brands listen to pro community and, Mm -hmm. In fact, like, I don't think a lot of brands even just listen to anybody. I think they're just, <laughs> I mean, they're just in their own true, space. True, they're just, Like, they're just in their own space and, and, and creating products. Uh-huh. And then for us, like, because like, our background, like, we're not artists, right? And uh, if you're telling me that, Tom, like, create the next brush, yeah. you know, for rapper, mm-hmm. I wouldn't know how to do it. Yeah. So, like, the only thing that we can do is listen. And I think, like, listening to feedback is at very, very core of what we do. And then... I mean, like I was like li- like this little Asian kid a couple months ago. I mean, four months ago with the suitcase of brushes coming to New York. I mean, yeah. I didn't know any makeup artist at all. So, yeah. so all of like the hundred something artists that I met was just through word of mouth. And then I, so every single artist that I meet, like you know, we have coffee, we, be- we become friends, and then I, you know, we ask for three, you know, introductions, and then I just meet them subsequently, you know. So, so that's how we started. Yeah. And I think like listening to community and a meeting with artists, like their their opinions really helped us to create all of the brushes, all like all of the products, and uh, and that's why I think that uh, is something that like we did something very very extreme that uh, we went from from so we went from like 
not listening to the community into where like our design decisions are driven by the communities and yeah. all of the feedback. So what's interesting is that so for for every single one of our customers and artists that's trying our brushes, we always ask for feedback. Yeah. And so that's where the name refer yeah, comes from, right? Exactly. Can, can you explain a little bit um on how the name came about? So refer, um, we were trying to find a word that is close to reference because mm-hmm. like for us, like like artist's opinion is our reference point of how we create these products mm-hmm. and how we create brushes. And it is our like it is the reference point for our for all of our design decisions. Mm-hmm. So like that's how like the name um, became became refer. Oh wow. Yeah. I love that. And when we initially spoke, you told me that um, you guys have been going through a rigorous review process. Yes. And now you have over how many reviews? I think individually we have around, like, more than 3,000 reviews already. Wow. Yeah, and, like, I mean, like, the ratings are pretty good. I think, like, like the average is, like, above 4.8 for every single brush. So that's pretty encouraging. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. And so explain to us how you guys have been setting up the prototype sessions mm-hmm. um, and, like, you know, the process of how you've been getting these brushes out to artists. Because I went onto the website and there were so many people that left reviews that I, I know mm-hmm. personally. Mm-hmm. And I just found that w- that's so invaluable mm-hmm. because as a consumer, most times we want to Google a product and, you know, yes. look at reviews before we buy something. Mm-hmm. And it's even better if it's someone that we know. Mm-hmm. So kind of explain to us how um, you guys decided to come up with that that whole like uh, system mm-hmm. and how it's been working for you guys. Clearly, it's been working good, but I want to know like what was the process into it. So when we first launched the website, I mean, we're just three nerds thinking that okay, so if we but nerds this, is a good thing, yeah, but I, mean, I, lo- I love it. <laughs> we're like okay, so if we put our like if you go on our, our website right now, you can like there's not a lot of like product descriptions. Like the first thing you see are pro tips from different customers and different artists, Mm -hmm. right? So we didn't really want to put our own words onto the websites because I don't think we're truly authorities of, um, of like, the makeup community. Mm -hmm. And we always want to have, like, the voices of our customers and of the artists heard. And that is very, very important to us because we think we're trying to build a shopping experience where where if you go on a site, you should see honest and unbiased reviews from from people who are pros, Mm -hmm. from from customers who, are, who actually use our brushes, you know, religiously, mm-hmm. and uh, and that is that is something that's very very important to us. So we always ask for feedback for every from every single customer, and the prototype program is mm-hmm. is because I like, when we launch our our core set like uh, from um, brushes zero one two zero six, like obviously it's it's a very it's a it's an essential kit, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's not like the full brush range. Yeah. So we're trying to complete our range now. Okay. And. Uh, as three nerds, we can do it. You know, yeah. like we you need, need help. help. Yeah, we, yeah, we need <laughs> yeah. help from the community. And like traditionally, I guess like a brand would just hire a consultant. You know, some someone says like you know she's an expert, and then yeah. and then she will tell you whatever brush you should make, etc. It's like it's one person's opinion. Yeah. But for us, like we took a very different route. That's we're just literally crowdsourcing all of the opinions. Yeah. Right? Because like most of the artists that is buying our brushes have strong opinions on what brush that should be in the in the range and what, what brushes are missing from the current market. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was a perfect opportunity. So we always release different products. So a lot of the people actually send pictures of the, the brushes that they want to make. Yeah. And then there are a lot of uh, similar brushes on the market that the, they wish it can be improved. So we yeah. took, I mean, we take these designs and then we just design them and then we produce prototypes mm-hmm. for the community to, uh, to test. So we, our prototype program is open to everybody. And uh, and so you can just go on our site and then just request a prototype from us. If it is a, if it is available, you can get it right away. And then sometimes it will be free, and then most of the time it will be heavily, heavily, heavily uh, discounted. discounted. Like, I think that's like, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's it's like discounted to a point that like we understand that every single time we we ship out a prototype, we're, we're expecting to lose money. Like, yeah. But then the plan, but then the thing that we're give, uh, we're getting back is the is the feedback and the review for that specific brush model. Yeah. And so then, essentially, it makes you guys a stronger company, and the money yes. that you won't be spending in like consultancy and exactly. advertising, exactly. you get it, you get that back from the pro community. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So whenever whenever prototype is out of stock, we just send. Uh, we will always send emails when something. When a prototype is mm-hmm. is uh, is available again, so anybody can go on the website, Any, anybody sign up. sign up. Does it matter where they are in the no. world, though? No. Okay. So yeah, no. So wow. in the U.S., we ship to uh, ship worldwide, and then we have a warehouse in in Canada, ships mm. in Canada. So it covers basically, yeah, 
basically, basically everywhere, everything. Everywhere. That's so like amazing. the only thing we do is like we charge a little shipping and uh just and reasonable. Reasonable, yes. Yeah. So it sounds like you are always on. Mm-hmm. Um, you're running a company. Yeah. Um, I know you are sending DMs, connecting with yeah, other artists. Yes, yeah. a lot of DMs. What do you do on your downtime? Downtime? Uh-huh. <laughs> if you have, even if it's like five minutes, what do you do on uh, your downtime? Well, I have a dog. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, what kind? Yeah, a, a French bulldog. Oh, you nice. know, I recently just got a puppy, so I play with my dog a lot. And then Is it I, a boy, girl? It's a boy, yeah. What's his name? He's named Cho Cho. Oh, nice. It's in Chinese, it just means uh, it smells. Oh, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. And I play a lot of video games sometimes. Yeah. And I watch a lot of shows. And I watch a lot of YouTube. So back in the days, you know, all my YouTube feed would be, say, Game of Thrones, NBA, games, you know, yeah. video games. But now all my YouTube feeds are just makeups. Oh, wow. <laughs> and makeup tutorials. Suggested all yeah. the YouTubers. Exactly. So, like, so like I've, I've, I've been watching tutorials, informations, like, every every day, every just 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 doing research. So right now my feed is pretty crazy. But yeah. It's pretty interesting. It's it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's very entertaining and, uh, and enjoyable for, uh, for me as well. And what do you think are some of the, like, apps or processes that you do in order to keep yourself not only organized or mm-hmm. efficient? Mm-hmm. I know some people, like physical planners like yeah. me some people are apps but like there is so much you get up there's tons of you know requests for prototypes there's you know all these things that you have to do with you know shipping and mm-hmm. all these different things how do you keep yourself how do you not go crazy pretty much yeah so <laughs> that's like i guess like that's an interesting part too that uh, we're a pretty pretty techie um uh, Techie, already, um, yeah. Beauty company because like all, all of us can code mm-hmm. and all of us can program. So we actually program a lot of in-house tools for oh, ourselves. Oh wow! Yeah, so That's so so, cool. so for example, every single time a person requests a prototype, you know, we can like I get a notification on my phone instantly, so I can reach out and and email them. Every single time I get a review, say. Say like say if there's a bad experience on our prototype, then yeah. I get like notified immediately as well, so I can reach out and ask them. So, I guess like it helps me to, and it helps me, my uh, my friend Kenny and Dean, literally just I guess like it it uh, it closes the gap of our interaction with our customers and our uh, product testers. It allows us to like reach out uh, to them on like a one by one basis. So when you guys uh, do get a negative review, do you guys mm-hmm. all keep like keep all those negative reviews in one and see how you can re- improve? Like, how do yes. you guys deal with that? Because overall, I feel like the reviews on the brushes have been amazing, mm-hmm. but I'm sure there are the there one are, or two one. If, you know, if you scroll down, like we don't we don't really correct any even grammar mistakes or or anything on our side. So so there are definitely reviews that uh, that's like not not satisfying. So you can yeah. probably see them. So we. So when we get a negative review on a certain brush, we always ask for questions, and they'll always send us uh, examples, mm-hmm. um, photos on the, on the, what we should do better. Mm-hmm. And then if uh, if it's something that's like they want a better taper, they would they will actually like draw it for us. So even though like those kind of tools are like. Like allows us to to have like I guess h- hundreds and hundreds of conversations with our customers and product uh, testers every day, mm-hmm. so it closes the gap, but it's still a lot of sweat and, and like sweat and tears because it is like literally like hundreds of DMs running every day. Every day, yeah, it's, it's pretty exhausting. Yeah, yeah I yeah. could imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, so what can so actually so yesterday um mm-hmm. was a makeup show. Yeah. it was you guys' first time there, yeah. and it could get super crazy mm-hmm. at that event. So yeah. tell me what was your experience it was um, pretty crazy. Yeah, like was, at the makeup show. Like we didn't know what to expect. So we went into the makeup show literally with no in- zero intention to like sell brushes aren't like we were there to give out um, prototypes. Yes. So because, you guys offered a prototype to anybody that came to the booth. Yeah, and and they just complete a survey of um of their first impressions because like so for me like New York as a brand like New York is probably like the like the beginning, like the inception of Refer because, because you know, like I didn't know any makeup artists. So, yeah. so New York, it was like literally the place I started meeting all of the artists in the community. Yeah. So we thought like it's a great opportunity for us to, to, uh, to give back. And also because we are launching our full line on June 10th. Mm-hmm. And because of that, uh, we're trying to complete our range. Yeah. So it was a perfect opportunity for us to get as much feedback as possible at a makeup show. Yeah. So we just give out um, a free prototype so, so we have five different prototypes a person can choose from, and they can choose from one, and we give them product to test, and then each testing session takes around three minutes, and then they just give us their initial impressions, leave their email, and they can take the brush home, 
And we're also planning to follow up with every single person there. I think we serve around a thousand people. Wow. Yeah, at the makeup show. That's amazing. Yeah, so so hopefully we'll get a, a thousand more feedbacks on all the brushes, and then that will help us make a decision on uh, on what brushes that we should introduce next into our line. Okay. So besides brushes, mm-hmm. what is next for Refer? So Refer. so for Refer, um, the next. Mm-hmm. So I think we're so like right now our main focus is to complete our range. Right? Okay. So on June tenth, we're going to launch our Kickstarter after getting all of the feedbacks. Mm-hmm. And so on June tenth, you're 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 going to be able to, I guess, pre-order the entire entire range. Mm-hmm. After we do all like all of the vetting, and uh, so so because so one of the very, very interesting things like, like a lot of like from what I see is that a lot of artists have very different preferences on handling. Like, yes, like, I okay. saw that on the website. You <laughs> like, guys have so on the website they have you have long, short, yeah. extra long, extra long, original. and like and like original yeah. size. So we can never really get an answer of like what our handle length can be. So I think for our Kickstarter, we're gonna offer every single order that you can just customize your handle length. Wow. So so literally everything, every order is gonna be able to like every order is essentially you know custom, like custom made, like handmade in Japan. And what would the price range look like? We well, we're not sure about the price range yet because like I'm not sure how many brushes going to be in the full line. But mm-hmm. uh, at the Kickstarter, it's definitely going to be a significant discount. And currently, what is your the price points like? Uh, for all of the so for our core set from um, um, for brush 01 to 05, it's one sixty seven. Okay, that's mm-hmm. really good. These brushes last you forever. Exactly. Good brushes last exactly. you forever. So where can our listeners find more info about Refer? Refer, refer yeah. Refer. Just, just I'm remember just like, reference. help me. Reference. But when I say reference, yeah. don't say refer. Ref- help me. Refer. Refer. Yeah. I think it's my accent. Let's blame it on my accent. Um, so where can our listeners find more info on you guys and connect with the brand? So I think every uh, we check our DM religiously every single morning, and uh, you can always uh, DM us at refer.to. So to just stands for Toronto, mm-hmm. and uh, our website is refer.com. So you can you can request prototype from us at any time, and if it's available, you can choose it. If it's not, we'll always email you when uh, when they are back in stock. Okay, I think. That is it. Oh, thank you so much for thank having me. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I've personally used these brushes, and I've been using them. Actually, I used them on my first Met client yesterday, oh, awesome. and it was amazing. She's like, what is this? And I'm, <laughs> I told her it was your brushes. So mm-hmm. it worked out pretty well. But thank you so much for coming on to the show. I will leave your information in the show notes, mm-hmm. um, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Amazing. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yay. <laughs>